This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Carbonite. What up y'all, Int80, rapper in dual core, drink all the booze, hack all the things. Today we're going to build a Pixie server in Debian and use it to boot Backtrack 5. A Pixie is a pretty cool technology, you can use it to remotely boot operating systems, so it's nice it re removes the need for physical installation media. So you don't have to have USB drives sitting around or CDs or whatever. So new version of Ubuntu comes out, throw it into Pixie, boot over the network, good to go. You got like 50 laptops you need to wipe, plug them into the network, boot D-band through Pixie, and you're off and running. Um, it's even cool too, you can use like virtualized environments type of a deal because you can boot like live environments uh, for people when they log into a workstation, have a remote data store, and when they log out, everything goes away but comes back the next time exactly the same. So you don't get like persistence chilling on the box. Um, to do this, we're going to start with a few items already in play, like you watch cooking shows and they've got, I mean, I don't watch cooking shows, I've just heard that this like this, but they've got certain things already set up. Um, so what we've got set up is one VM that's got Debian unstable, um, and then we've got like a second VM that's just got a disk uh, or like a drive associated to it, but doesn't have anything installed. We're going to use the second VM to boot Backtrack as the client. So if you need to pause, get your Debian installed. Um, I use net install from Debian.org. Um, you can just go grab the ISO, install it into the VM straight away. You don't need any extra stuff. We'll be walking through uh, the services you need to install, like TFTP and NF, uh, NSFD and stuff like that. So once you've got um, Debian installed, resume, come back, and we'll be right here. So we've got our Debian install, and we've moved it up to unstable. Um, it's a real simple change to do that. Uh, just look at the sources.list file under apt, um, and you basically set the sources in app to be uh, unstable and contrib and non-free. Um, do an aptitude update and a dist upgrade and you're good to go. Um, I've, I've always run unstable. You just get the newer versions of things and it's actually not unstable despite the name. So there's that. Okay, so once you're upgraded to unstable um, and you've got your Debian install, we're ready to rock. Um, I've got a few items here that I'm starting out with. Uh, the defaults file, the exports file, the pixie.conf, and the pa.png, along with the backtrack.menu files, are all up on my GitHub, github.com slash int80. Um, and then I've got this backtrack5 ISO that we've downloaded. So what we're going to do is mount the ISO, copy all the files off into a directory that we'll be using um, for our pixie store. So uh, let's first off create that directory. We we'll use the dash p flag with makedir so that it um, creates all the parent directories along the way. So we'll do uh, TFTP boot uh, backtrack uh, 5 R1 because that's the release X. And then if you, like I have a laptop that does 64-bit, but I also have a netbook that does 32-bit. So we'll do X86 and 64. Um, and then, you know, some days I feel like GNOME and most days I feel like KDE. So we'll do GNOME and KDE also. But just for this segment, we'll just be using KDE. So we make those directories and we're ready to mount the um, ISO. And we'll just mount it on the mount directory as a mount point. So we mount it as loop or, uh, loopback and read only because we don't need to modify any of the ISO contents. And let's just copy all the backtrack5 contents out into the backtrack5 R1 x86 because it's 32-bit and KDE directory. This will take a minute, so um, just, I don't know, drink vodka Red Bull or something while you wait for all the files to copy. It's a few gigs, mainly it's uh, the whole live file system that's all compressed into a squash FS file, and um, it just has to copy like two gigs of files over. So uh, once the copying completes, we can unmount the um, ISO. The next component we're going to need is SysLinux. SysLinux has a bunch of different subsystems for loading a Linux operating system in a kernel. Um, you can get SysLinux through apt, so it's nice and easy. Aptitude install SysLinux, um, and Aptitude will go out and download it and set it up for you. Unpacks it, sets it up, and we're good to go. Now we need to get a couple files out of the SysLinux install path and copy them into our TFTP boot. So go into user lib SysLinux, and we're going to copy Visa menu uh, dot C32 and Pixie Linux dot zero into our TFTP, TFTP boot. Now let's make a directory under the TFTP boot so, uh, for Pixie Linux dot CFG. 
and we're going to copy um, some other files that we're going to need for our Pixie server uh, into this pixielinux.cfg. So we'll need the default file, uh, we will need the pixie.conf file, and we'll take our pa.png, it's a Penny Arcade like splash screen uh, for the back of the Pixie menu. And we'll copy those into the pixielinux.cfg directory. At this point, we're pretty much all set up with Pixie Lit, or uh, with, um, with Pixie Linux, with the uh, syslinux stuff. Um, while we're at it, I've got this uh, backtrack menu. Let's go ahead and copy that over as well, just so we make sure we don't forget it. Because when you forget it, it doesn't work right. Now, we're almost there. We're like halfway. The next part we need is our TFTP daemon. Um, that's going to be sending the files across the network onto the client system. Also, you probably guessed it, you can get it through Aptitude. Nice and easy. So Aptitude install TFTPD and we'll take the dash HPA. It downloads, it installs, good to go. Configuration change for this is real simple. It's the Etsy default TFTP dash HPA file. Um, and all we need is to change the directory to that TFTP boot that we made at the beginning. You can also use Nano Pico, whatever editor you want to use. Personal preference. So we've got our TFTP daemon configured. Let's go ahead and restart the service. Service TFTPD-HPA, restart. And now you're cooking with TFTP. All right, Paul typing 333. All right, so now we've got one last piece to add in and that is our NFS daemon. Um, you probably are picking up, it's available in aptitude. This is why Debian's beautiful. You get actual package management and it does everything for you. I would rather work less, I guess. At least with this type of stuff. All right, so aptitude install NFS dash kernel server. It goes, downloads all the stuff. You've seen it, you've been doing it. Um, so we go ahead and get our setup and configuration for this is really easy as well. Um, I've got an exports file that is uh, also on the GitHub and just copy that to Etsy exports. Bam. All right, so let's take a look at that real quick, that file, there's not much to it. Um, all it says is, hey, we're going to be exporting this particular directory. Um, I only have the one entry in there because we're just setting up the KDE 32-bit for x86, um, and our network subnet on the VM is 192.168.2. So just modify that as need be, but pretty easy. You can figure out how to modify it for other distros. So before we move on, let's take a look at those first files that we copied over, defaults and the backtrack.menu and uh, pixie.conf. Um, and we'll just see what's going on with those. They basically are the configurations that help make this all work. So um, we've got our pixielinux.cfg directory. So cd there, and let's take a look at the default file first. Um, so it's real simple. Uh, we've just got like some options. Um, telling it to use the visa menu uh, .c32, it's like a, like a binary executable, um, use that as the default. And uh, first option is to boot off the local hard drive, and second option is for our backtrack. It's really easy to scale this out, you want to add in other distros, no problem, just throw another section in there starting with menu title and ending with menu end. Not much to it. Um, so we also see the menu include uh, entry in there, and so that points to our pixie.conf. So let's take a look at that. And not much to this either. Just saying for background image, it's like appearance type stuff. For background image, we're gonna use this Penny Arcade PNG um, and some different colors, widths and rows. Um, widths for columns. This is all like cosmetic stuff, but it makes it look cool because you boot your system up and you get to see cool splash screen and you're like, sweet. At least I'm like that. Uh, I found like this is kind of a random note. I don't know, might help you in the future. Using JPEGs uh, for the background, like sometimes you get this weird, I don't know, like it's like artifacts basically uh, up, up at like the corners of the screens or the top or like in different places. I've had better luck with uh, ping files, so I've just kind of gone with ping. Your mileage may vary. Also, if you noticed uh, on the menu color border entry, you see like uh, the hex codes there. And normally you do HTML, right? You see like six because it's like RGB, right? It's one byte for each but there's like eight. Um, and so what that first one is, like the leftmost byte is actually the alpha. So if you set it to zero, it's like completely transparent. If you set it to 255 um, or FF, um, it's uh, fully opaque. 
So you, that's kind of cool. You can do like some transparency and color stuff as well. Um, okay, so we've got our TFTP daemon installed. We've got our NFS daemon installed. Make sure you restart the NFS daemon too um, after you copy that exports file over, uh, just to be sure. I don't know if it actually needs to happen, but yeah, it doesn't hurt. Um, and let's see, we've got our files in place with our TFTP boot directory and the backtrack file system and our menu configurations. So I think we're ready to boot the client VM. Um, so here goes, I've just powered it on. So you see your client Mac address, that's like the Mac address that's on the system for the NIC. Oh sweet, and it booted. So you see it like um, doing the DHCP spinning, that's like requesting a DHCP IP address. Um, and eventually uh, it gets served up and we're good to go. So here is our Pixie setup. Um, we've got the Penny Arcade splash screen, we've got our boot local entry. If we go into backtrack, um, we see our x86 KDE and our x64 KDEs, which are in the backtrack.menu file, um, which I think I forgot to open, but you'll see it. Um, so if we choose the x86 KDE one, uh, it'll kick on for a minute. On this particular machine, the video modes um, don't play nice, so we'll just enter a different number for the video mode. I did 379, so it's like 1280 by whatever. Um, but look, it's booting. So it's pretty cool because we're not using like a DVD or a USB drive. We're doing this over the network. So mission accomplished, um, great success, drink all the booze, hack all the things. Yeah, so now we're in our backtrack environment and we didn't need any like actual devices for it other than our laptop. So it's pretty cool. That's like the fun part of Pixie. So um, that's pretty much all there is to doing Pixie. You get a TFTP daemon, an NFS daemon, set up the configs, set up your distros that you want to boot, and you're on a roll. It's really not that hard, and it's pretty cool because you don't have to necessarily be in the same location as the box you're booting. Um, a couple of notes. Um, you have to modify your, your uh, DHCP daemon, so whatever device on your network is serving up DHCP, just add an entry to point towards uh, your server that's doing all the Pixie work. Um, like my old uh, WRT54G, it runs DDWRT, so it uses DNS mask, and you can just go in the options on the uh, WRT and add the entry for DNS mask. Um, just Google, like, and see what your DHCP daemon entry configuration should look like, but it's usually just like one line. Um, for VMware, it's like a dhcpd.conf. I can post it on the forums if anybody needs it. Um, also, another thing to consider is that Pixie is usually off by default, right? You boot your computer, you're usually booting off your local media like hard drive or CD-ROM or something like that. So you'll probably need to go into like your BIOS or your UEFI and move the, enable it maybe, and move the LAN setting up so that it's booting off the network ahead of the local devices. Um, last thing is that with Pixie, you can get rid of your physical media that you don't need anymore. So you can cut back on your USB drives or slowly but surely rid yourself of CDs, but not dual core CDs. Or, I don't know, I rip those to MP3s, so whatever. Um, if you've got uh, like any questions you want to get in contact with me, I'm at dual core music on Twitter. Um, you can find me all over internet. On the Hack5 forums, I'm int80, int0x80. Again, the files will be up on my GitHub, github.com slash int80. And if you've got questions, suggestions, unions, or intersections, um, hit us up, feedback at hack5.org. Peace out. Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone. Your computer crashes, it gets infected with a virus, you drop it. But if you get Carbonite Online Backup before your disaster, then no need to worry, because your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site. And it's really, really easy to get them back. Plus, you get anytime, anywhere access to your backed up files from any computer or on your smartphone or iPad with a free Carbonite app. With Carbonite, unlimited backup for your PC or Mac is just 59 bucks a year. That's less than five bucks a month. But when you use the offer code HAK5 to start your free 15-day trial, you'll get two months free if you decide to buy. All the details are at Carbonite.com, and remember to use the offer code HAK5 to get two months free with purchase. It's time once again for the nibble. Have you ever wanted to do a directory listing and actually find out how big each directory is in Linux? You see, if I do an ls tac lh, I can get a human readable of all of the files and directories, but you'll notice here, like my videos folder, it's only 4K because the directory is a file and Linux is woo. But get this, if we do 
pseudo, I, I know, because I'm not in Backtrack 5 anymore, I'm not running this route, pseudo do du for disk usage, and then we do a tack ks, and then with dollar sign, and we put in parentheses ls tack d, and we're only looking for slash star, because we're only interested in directories, and we close that paren, pipe that to sort, tack nr, and then pipe that to cut, so that we're only getting the second field, tack f2, and pipe that to xargs, tack d, and what we're looking for is a uh, backslash n, which is a return, and then again do, tack sh, and now two greater than, and we're gonna send that to dev null because we're not really interested in it. What we end up with is, a listing of all of our directories and how big they are. How fantastic is that? All you had to do was sudo do ks lsd sort nr cut f2 xargs d do sh dev null. I mean, and people say Linux is difficult. I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, if you've got a nibble you want to share with us, send over your four bits at hack5.org nibble. Thanks again, and uh, we'll be right back after this.